This is the introductory section for the HCNA Huawei Networking Technology and Device Entry Course and provides an overview of the basic enterprise network architectures in order to set the scene for the rest of the course and allow business consideration to be firstly applied before commencing network design and implementation. Enterprise business requirements highlight a need for networks that are capable of adapting to ever-changing business demands in terms of enterprise business growth and evolving services. It is imperative, therefore, to understand the principles of what constitutes an enterprise network and how it is formed and adapted to support real-world business demands. Upon completion of this section, it is expected that trainees will be able to explain what constitutes an enterprise network, describe the common enterprise network architecture types, as well as describe some of the solutions commonly implemented within an enterprise network to support business operations. So before we introduce the concept of real-world enterprise networks, we first may wish to ask, what exactly is a network? Well, we can simplify the concept of a network down to one word, and that is communication. So networks are basically a means by which two or more entities are able to communicate, and this can be something as simple as a human conversation, or the sending of data from a PC or terminal to a printer or a server. Many different forms of networks exist, including home user networks, small office home office or SOHO networks, and such networks may include a limited number of users and communicating devices. Enterprise networks are generally industry-based networks and may be defined as either small, medium or large. The size of an enterprise is usually determined by the number of employees and revenue turnover. However, these values may vary globally. As a general measurement, it can be understood, however, that a small enterprise will usually consist of at least 10 employees, a medium-sized enterprise of more than 250 employees, and larger enterprises in the range of 500 to 1,000 or more employees. Industries that generally comprise of enterprise networks may include, but not be limited to, the finance sector, education, government offices, and even the energy sector. In the past, many of these enterprise networks may have operated as standalone networks. However, with the growth of the internet, communication within and also between all industries has been made possible. The internet can be understood to be a network of networks, and these are founded on a standardized set of communication protocols that make all network communication possible. The IP network can be understood to represent the standard now for network communication in the world today. So enterprise networks require solutions also for supporting communication over large geographical distances between remote offices, as we can see here in the form of uh, the HQ and branch offices, and also other remote locations. So industries may also involve remote workers that need access to resources that are only found within the enterprise network. We can take advantage then of the ubiquitous nature of the internet in order to support these business needs. However, as a public domain, the security of the communication over the internet has always been a major concern for enterprise networks. One of the primary operations of the enterprise network, then, is to be able to provide services to users in order to support the business operation. And this may take many different forms. Different businesses and enterprise industries actually have different requirements and we can see here, based on those requirements, uh, we may also implement different architectures within the enterprise network. Some of the key factors that need to be addressed, however, is the ability to support uh, scalability of the network. So where we may actually support gro future growth of the network, we need to ensure that the architecture also supports this growth. In addition, we also must ensure that the network operation is always stable and available. So we represent here an example of how enterprise network basic architectures may actually look like. And uh, these involve architectures which may support both small and medium-sized networks. Now these uh, architectures must take into account a number of factors. The first of those being cost, as we've mentioned, the uh, ability to scale, and also the ability to support the number of users as well as provide availability at all times. So we can see here in the terms of uh, the uh, medium-sized network, we have a three-layer hierarchy here in the form of a core aggregation and access layer in order to support those uh, users and also provide availability in the case of uh, link failure. 
However, on the other side, we need to also consider the cost for smaller networks. So we have basically a compact version of that in which the aggregation and core layers have actually been uh, com combined into a single layer here. So from a business point of view, these architectures represent common solutions for supporting various business requirements. In summary then, it is asked, what are some of the general differences found between small and medium-sized enterprise networks? What we can summarize is into certain forms of business considerations, and the first of these considerations is the factor of cost. And of course, within medium-sized enterprise networks, it is expected that the uh, budget that supports the enterprise network itself uh, will be much greater in order to support both design, equipment purchasing, as well as maintenance. Another factor here is the uh, ability to support the business needs. So this uh, basically refers to both resources and uh, certain services that will be required. So within a medium-sized enterprise network, we would expect that these uh, requirements are much larger. The ability to support the users is another factor. And of course, a larger network will incur a larger employee base. And finally, then we can also consider the impact of network failure. Since a larger impact will actually occur to a larger network, especially in terms of both cost and lost business revenue. What are some of the basic design considerations that need to be taken into account for small and medium sized enterprise networks? Well, one of the first factors that we need to consider is as to whether the network itself is scalable. Since as the uh, enterprise business itself grows, it is expected that the network itself is able to grow along with it as the number of users or employees within the network grows. Another factor is availability, and uh, this basically goes together with the concept of redundancy in ensuring that the network is always available for all users. In the case that uh, any link or device within the network fails, that also we have uh, another redundant path or basically other redundant uh, networks available that are able to support the continued operation of this network. And uh, another factor then is the concept of performance and ensuring that the devices within the network are able to support the number of users. Since uh, one of the factors we do not want to occur is uh, congestion within the network itself. And uh, one final consideration that we may want to uh, take, take uh, note of is uh, the concept of security. Uh, since uh, as the network grows, so does the number of uh, threats that basically will be faced by that network.